Oh, it does work. Look at that. All right. Very, very good. All right, so. Welcome everyone this morning on this, uh, this, uh, what is it? Uh, this catechetical word Wednesday. I know there's a lot on tap today as we uh, continue to, we'll try to do our Zoom Bible study today. Um, but we'll see how that goes later in the day. And we're going to, we're going to uh, continue on with the book of Jonah. Oh, what a great book that is as we continue to see how the will of the Lord works, even in the midst of Jonah and also Nineveh, how impossible it seemed that they would believe. A lot of impossibilities here, but yet the Lord works through all things and his will is done according, kata, to his word. All right. So um, anyways, uh, today on Catechetical Word Wednesday, Oh, that's right. If I do it this way, I can't see who's on. So, um, at least I know how to do it. Okay, why don't we start here? All right. Oh, see, when I turn my camera around, I, I can't see who's on. But, but good morning, Matt. Good morning. Thanks for joining here uh, with us today. Um, and um, at least I know how to... Well, if I write something, I can turn it around and, and see where it goes. But uh, welcome. Uh, today, we're on this Catechetical Word Wednesday. Uh, we are going to discuss the blessing of baptism. Now, let us pray. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death, you have purchased and won for us forgiveness of sins, rescuing us from death and the devil, and obtaining eternal salvation, which you now work in baptism. Give us your spirit that we may believe what you have said. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And so receive these gifts of forgiveness of sins, victory over death and the devil, and eternal salvation as your words and promises declare. Amen. 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 All right. All right, Matt. Well, uh, today uh, we're going to talk about baptism. Now, what? Why? You know, being non-Lutheran when I was younger, baptism was never part of the equation. I never thought that was anything about what this Christian life is all about. So, why is baptism such an important thing? Now, for everyone, I know uh, when we talk about a, a good book to read, again, uh, Praying Luther's Small Catechism. Uh, what a great book. And I'm just going to read um, an excerpt here for you. Uh, but when we talk about the blessings of baptism, now what are the benefits? It says right here in the Catechism, it works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this, as the words and promise of God declare in Mark 16.16. 16. Mark 16.16 16 writes, uh, Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. All right? Oh, good morning, Jeff. Uh, the blessing, right? You are declared righteous in your baptism. Now, faith receives baptism. Faith works as the Holy Spirit gives you faith. Apostles' Creed, Article 3, that he calls, gathers, and enlightens you in the true faith. Not by our own human reason or strength did we did we uh, come to our Lord, but he comes to us. He gives us faith. Now, that is, that is uh, when we talk about the mystery of our faith and how that works, it's all by the gift of the Holy Spirit, not by human reason or strength. Remember that. Uh, and when we talk about benefits, you guys, how do I know? Again, I, I always, we do confirmation on Zoom, right, uh, with the kids on Tuesday afternoon. And I, I was really nailing home this point. Because when we say, how do I know I'm forgiven? Basically, the, the question you're asking is, what does my faith, right? Uh, what does my faith trust? That's the bottom line. How do I know that I'm forgiven? And that's where, uh, when we talk about faith, this is the faith talk of where our faith trusts. So how do you know you're forgiven? Now, a, a lot of people will say, or how do you know you're a child of God? A lot of people will say, well, I do this, I do that. You know, I'm a good person. I, I've gone to church all my life, which is great. 
But that's not what makes you a child of God, right? It's not because you do the work. I mean, we're called to do good work. Uh, we're called to love and serve our neighbor. But what we talked about what makes us Christian, it's, it's our faith. It's what our faith trusts. And, and, and that faith is Jesus on the cross, his resurrection, right? Forgiveness of sins. Your faith is in what he has done and what he has gifted to you. A gifting language. The sacraments are a gifting language. Sacramentum, the mystery of our faith, the mystery of how God works in his means of grace, right? So in the baptism uh, that you have, Mark 16, 16, our key text, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not, will, will, who, whoever does not believe will be condemned. Right? So what does baptism give? The forgiveness of sins. Um, Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Rescues you from death and the devil. Romans 6, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? If we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Indeed, baptism, faith, what does it give? What does God give me? It gives me eternal salvation, right? 1 Peter 3, baptism which corresponds to this, that is Noah's flood in the water, now saves you through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Red Sea, through water. Naaman, washed, right? Leprosy, through water, right? Uh, the Jordan River, as the Israelites make it to the final push to the promised land, through water, old to new. Old generation, new generation. Red Sea, slavery to new life in Christ, right? Baptism. Naaman, cured, right? Uh, we, we see our baptism as well in that same way. Um, now, I want, I want you to hear this out uh, with me real quick right here. And it reads uh, right here in baptism, um, in this book. It says, uh, you know, what does it say? Well, yes. Uh It says, the faith consists in submission to what is given in the sacrament, the forgiveness of sins, right? So faith consists in submission to what is given in the sacrament. Faith trusts in what faith receives, the forgiveness of sins, in what the word of God has promised through his word, right? Baptism works for the forgiveness of sins, and as such, it brings about a change of lords, lowercase l to uppercase l. Sin is no longer Lord, but Jesus is. And that is what is happening in baptism. Think about that. Uh, baptism saves you. This is how God has gathered you in. And through this gift, our faith receives this gift, the faith that God has given to us by his very word, right? Faith trusts in the word of God and what the word of God has promised to us. So again, as we go back to our... Uh... Papers here, and I'm going to try to do this this way. Uh, let's see. Um, is it this way? Well, no, we'll, we'll leave it this way because uh, I get confused on how to use the camera. But when we talk about baptism, you guys, uh, we see Jesus from the cross, in his death and resurrection, there he institutes baptism for all nations, right? To baptize all nations, Matthew 28. But herein lies the promise. And that promise, oh, we're, I guess we're not going to do this paper thing because my, I don't know where my Sharpie went. But this promise is the forgiveness of sins. Now, uh, I think that's very important when we talk about 
uh, what our faith is, because there we find who we are in what the word has given to us. There our faith is, right? If we start adding in more of ourselves rather than what God has done for us or that we have to play a part for salvation, then uh, we, we get quickly confused. And, and there the devil too will, will do what? Will, will, will try to turn us away from God's word and his promises and cause great, uh, great strife and affliction in our hearts and minds, right? This is, this is the reality of how our human flesh works. But when we speak of baptism and the baptismal life, remember that. Um, that in our baptism, all is changed, all by the word of God. See, friends, you know, we didn't, we didn't call Jesus down here to save us from our sin. But he came down in the flesh to die for us on the cross. And likewise, we don't do, in a sense, a work in baptism. We're not doing something for God, but rather it is God who is working everything for us. That's why we always emphasize baptism, because there in the word, he promises to forgive us, to give us eternal salvation, and to rescue us from sin and death. And that is where our faith resides in the assurance of what God has given to us. I think that's very important when we talk about the nature of baptism because here we see it in a sense where our faith trusts in how and the way in which God works. Now, in our catechism, and this is where our faith clings, right? In our catechism, it reads, um, and I love this question because I think Many people have this question, right? And I know you know what I mean. But in our uh, in my ninety one version, if Christ has always has already won forgiveness and salvation um, for us, and um, I guess I'll just do this right here real quick. Um, if Christ has already won forgiveness and salvation for us, and gives us all by this by His grace alone, why do we still need baptism, right? And I, I think that's the question. I think everyone has. Like, you know, Jesus died on the cross, right? <laughs> what else is there? You're right. He did die on the cross and he did rise. But it says right here, Christ has indeed won full forgiveness and salvation for the whole human race with his perfect life, suffering, death, and resurrection. He distributes, he gives this same forgiveness in baptism, Right? He he distributes this same forgiveness in baptism. Baptism is a means of grace. In other words, how does God give us his grace? We have, let's say, oh, good morning, Connie. We uh, uh, We have what? We have a means of travel, right? Airplane, boat, bus, car, subway, train right? From one point to another. We have a means of travel. Now, how does this grace come to us? What is the means? And that is through baptism. How do I know I am saved? Death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who won for me the forgiveness of sins upon his cross, the full forgiveness. But there in the same way, he distributes that gift of grace through my baptism, right? How do you know? Titus 3. He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Right? Baptism, again, washes and sanctifies and declares us righteous in front of God. And that is where our faith clings. Right? Our faith trusts, our faith clings to how God works. And there we find our true victory and joy in the blessings of what baptism has given to us. That through his word, we are indeed saved. Right? So 
So how do you know? How do you know you're a child of God? And you'll tell people, because my faith, faith trusts in the Word of God. And what does the Word of God say? Believe and you will be baptized and you will be saved. Right? Believe and be baptized and you will be saved. What does the Word say? Um, <laughs> rise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Acts 22. What does the Word say? For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. When you put on Christ, that means you are righteous in his name. How do you know that you are righteous? Because your faith clings to the word of God. Don't you see? The baptismal life is all about what God has done by his word. Our faith trusts in his word. The devil will do what? He'll say, you know what? Connie, Norma, Jeff, Matt, all you who are out there, whoever may be listening later, you know, that's not enough. You, you, you have to solidify it. And, uh, what, and if we fall to this deceitful accusation, what happens? We, 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 we fall hook, line, and sinker to what he says, the devil. And, okay, we, we have to prove it. No. God declares you righteous by his death and resurrection, by your baptism, by the Lord's Supper. That is the life of a Christian, this sacramental theology where our faith trusts in God's word and the blessings that he has given to us, right? And I, I think that is very important uh, when we talk about or when we discuss uh, the blessings of baptism because, again, once we dismiss the efficacious word, that the word actually works the way it promises, then what happens? That can't be, someone says, or even the devil says it. How can that water do such things? And there you say, I am forgiven. Well, you, the devil says, come on, really? Are you sure you're forgiven by that water and word? I mean, surely you have to do something. Now, again, I'm not dismissing good works. Uh, we, we do the work out of the joy of what it means to be a child of God, not to prove anything, but all by God's glory, all by God's victory, all by God's living the full life as a Christian, joyfully in our baptism, knowing full well that we are covered by his grace. Again, good works does not earn. Good works does not merit salvation. Good works do not prove anything when it comes to who you are as a child of God, as the blessed redeemed. No, this is what God is working in you by gathering you in the water and word of holy baptism. That is why baptism is so great. Because the word of God, that is where our faith trusts and how God works, right? So again, yeah, God, God already died for me. Why, why do I need, why do you always talk about baptism, pastor? Because there we find where our conscience, right? is cleansed yeah, at the end of the day as Christians. It's all about certainty and assurance in a clear conscience. Let us draw near with a clear conscience, it says in, a, in Hebrews, right? Sprinkled with the blood of Christ. I mean, what, what is that clear conscience to you? And that is where your faith is. You know, a lot of people will say, uh, you know, my, my clear conscience is, is in my works, right? Yeah, put on Christ, Matthew. That's right. He, he works in you, right? We're, we're not, we are good, right? We are good. A kalos from the Greek, right? We are good. Uh, but by, by being robed with the righteousness of Christ, right, Matthew? Um, and it's through the goodness that Christ imputes on us, that he charges to us by his gospel, that we go out and, and love and serve neighbor, not to prove, not to want to be good, but we are already good. We are already holy. We are already righteous by what he has done for us from the cross to this means of grace, the way in which he gives us this grace in our baptism. <sighs> You know, like this is, you know, I, I, I get so into this because all my life, I missed the boat on this when I was younger. 
in, in Matthew. Wanting to be good. That was the thing. And, and at the end of the day, it was, how much do I have to be good? Because, man, I see everyone else around here, and they look polished and good, and, and they look like perfect Christians. And me, I'm like, when I was younger, <sighs> toiling. And I was like, I don't know. I, I try to be good. But I, I, I think I'm going to give up on this. I can't be Christian because, you know, no matter how much I try, Romans 7, I, I don't have the ability to carry out. I do the very thing I hate, as St. Paul says, right? But then my pastor says, my Lutheran pastor, when I went to church, said, finally, when I went to a Lutheran church, he said, no, this is what God does for you. And it just blew my mind. Baptism, right? I, I never even thought of it any other way, but just a ritual. But no, this is what God works, uh, does. Um, yes. Um, and and this, is, um, this is our victory, knowing every single day. I am baptized in Christ, connected to Christ in his death and resurrection, Romans 6. Right? <laughs> Anyways, this is, I mean, you think about, oh, you know, you, you always talk about that baptism thing, uh, people would say. And why would we? <laughs> because the word gives us that victory. Forgiveness, our faith, trust in how God works. Not how, we want, not how we want him to work, but how he says and promises to work by his very word. Huh. And we do daily sin much, but there in faith we repent and seek his faith, his promises, the way in which he works, the forgiveness of sins, even in your baptism. That even in your sin, what does your faith rest upon? As you repent, there you rest in your baptism that God has given to you, because there you find and receive that forgiveness. Right? Anyways, um, I pray that this may give you great peace. I don't know. In, in these times, I it's it's easy to be uh, <laughs> and. Um, it's easy to be, uh, what is it, distracted and, and discouraged. But I just always, in those moments, when we go through those moments of vulnerability, we say, you know what, who am I? Go back to the word and say, you know what, you're, you're with me, Lord. And you give me all I have. And you give me faith to trust in what you've given to me by that very word. My baptism Though I sin much, I am righteous in your name. Though I deserve eternal death, you rescue me from eternal and everlasting peril to eternal life, to the perpetual joy and gladness of what your word gives. And when we don't see the word for what it is, we're missing the boat. And I, I'm always so passionate about this because I'm talking to my younger self. 30 years ago, 25 years ago, <laughs> even 20 years ago, around there, right? And I wish I could tell that person, <laughs> look, just look at the word. Don't look at yourself. Look at what the word says, and there you will find your peace. And I pray that is for you as well. You know, it, not the human stuff, but the word stuff. What does it say? Yes. Um, anyways. Um, I guess that is our uh, catechetical word Wednesday for you this day. Dwell upon the word. Uh, go through this uh, catechism if you have it. Um, and really dwell upon the benefits to which God gives, okay? When you're terrified, when you're worried, when you're full of anxiety, flee to your baptism. When you're washing your hands in that sink, washing the dishes, look at that water and say, wow, God has baptized me. And I remember that baptism, how he cleanses me and washes me and forgives me. And when you're going through that car wash, just dwell upon there and say, wow, I remember my baptism and how he worked. You know, when you're going to that shower in the morning or night, that's right. 
you know, I, I cleanse myself all day and, and I clean and, and do the shampoo and soap. Uh, but remember how God has washed you and, and cleansed you in your baptism through that, uh, through the water and word of baptism. Again, to remember all the things that God has done through his word. So anyways, blessings on your day, friends. Apply this to your life and go with great joy knowing full well that by his word, how he works, by the faith that he has given to you by this very word, there we cling and trust to the day, well, in the pilgrimage of our faith, to the day he calls us home to live in the word, the faith that trusts in his promises, baptism. Again, tonight, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, join us for service, Vespers. Today we're going to go through First Peter 17 to 13. 17 to 25 chapter 1 uh, as we talk about what it means to live out that pilgrimage of faith um, and and what that looks like so join us tonight vespers all right why don't we pray why don't we pray dearly father we we are so blessed by this gift of baptism lord we know that by faith that you have given we cling to your word knowing this is how you work salvation in us grant us Grant us assurance and comfort in the conscience, knowing full well that by your word we are saved and redeemed. That by faith we are righteous in what you have done, that you have robed us and have rescued us from eternal death. Bless us, O Lord, this day, and this day we pray continually this week for Chad, uh, as you continue to bless him um, as he is waiting on his biopsy. Bless his family, bless the Nanowskis, Lead them, O Lord. Uh, bless, uh, bless Janelle. Bless Norma and her family. Uh, bless Chris and her mother as she's going through chemotherapy. Uh, bless all those who are first line, first responders, medical workers. Um, uh, bless them, O Lord, in the safety of this day. Uh, bless our world and our government and uh, grant peace to our world this day and grant them wisdom to do what is right for the people all according to your will, O Lord. And bless those who are listening right now. Um, lead them, O Lord, in your word and, and guide them uh, this day in the victory of your grace. Thank you, O Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, friends. Have a great day and the Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us. Whether you're hearing it right now or hearing it later archived, may God's peace and his word go well with you. And may you flee to your baptism. Adios. Goodbye.